So let's continue our discussion of electric AC generators. Recall that an electric AC generator essentially transforms mechanical energy into electric energy. In other words, it uses the principle of electromagnetic induction to generate an alternating electric current. So let's suppose we have the following depiction of our AC generator. So we have our two magnets, the North Pole and the South Pole, and that creates an external magnetic field that is assumed to be uniform. So let's suppose we connect the coils of our wire to the following closed electric circuit, which contains a light bulb. Now we apply mechanical energy, we apply mechanical force and that essentially rotates our axle which also rotates the following coils. Now as our coils rotate that will induce an EMF within our electric circuit and as a result of that induced EMF an electric current will exist within our circuit and that electric current will travel through this closed circuit and that will power the following light bulb so our bulb will light up. Once again, suppose we connect the coils of the electric AC generator to a circuit that contains a light bulb as shown in the diagram. When mechanical energy is applied to our axle, the coils of the wire will begin to rotate within our magnetic field, thereby generating an induced EMF within the circuit. As a result of this voltage difference, electric current will begin begin to flow and that will power our light bulb. It will light our bulb up. Now, what exactly is the limitation of this process? Well, when our coils begin to rotate, those coils will begin to carry electric current. Now, recall whenever a wire that contains an electric current is placed within to a magnetic field, that magnetic field will exert a magnetic force on that electric current inside that wire. And in this case, if we apply right hand rule number two, we see that the force, our magnetic force that acts on our wire as a result of this magnetic field will create a torque that will point in the opposite direction of our initial torque. So this torque creates our rotational motion and this magnetic field will create a torque that will point in the opposite direction and this torque is known as the counter torque. So once again, recall that a current carrying wire that is placed inside a magnetic field will feel a magnetic force as a result of that magnetic field. So once this begins to rotate, this magnetic field will exert a force on this wire because that wire will carry an induced electric current. Now, therefore, the rotating loop will feel a magnetic force due to our external field. By right hand rule number two, this force will create the torque that will oppose the torque creating the rotation. And this torque is commonly known as the counter torque. So, if we apply right hand rule number two, we point our hand in the direction of our electric current. Let's suppose it's going this way. So we point it this way and then we rotate our hand in the direction of our magnetic field. Our magnetic field begins on the north side of the magnet and ends on the south side of our magnet. So it travels in the following direction. And this magnetic force will create a torque that will essentially oppose our original torque. We see that the higher our electric current is, the greater this counter torque is. So we see that in order for our AC electric generator to actually generate an alternating electric current, the amount of energy that we input, our input torque 
has to be greater than the counter torque that is produced by this external magnetic field.